a woman alone in a freezing shed, stirring 20 kilograms of radioactive death with her bare hands. Every single day for four years. The scientific world thinks she's a joke, but she's hunting something that could change everything or kill her trying. Two Nobel Prizes later, that crazy woman proved atoms weren't immortal. She cracked the code of matter itself. Oh, and that shed? Still glowing with deadly radiation 120 years later, one touch could kill you. This is Marie Curie, the woman who tortured rocks until they gave up the universe's deepest secrets. Picture hell disguised as a laboratory. 1898, a converted shed with dirt floors, no heat, and a roof that leaked poison into your lungs. Winter temperatures that froze your breath, summer heat that made you dizzy, and in the center, a woman stirring vats of radioactive ore that was slowly killing her. Marie Curie wasn't just conducting an experiment, she was betting her life on a hunch that everyone said was impossible. While other scientists sat in comfortable offices theorizing, Curie was out here torturing matter with systematic precision that bordered on madness. Her method? Simple but terrifying. Form hypothesis. Design, experiment, measure everything, document everything. Repeat until you have proof or you're dead. This systematic obsession would crack open two new elements, shatter our understanding of atoms, and birth the nuclear age. The cost? Her life. But she didn't know that yet. Marie Curie was never supposed to exist. Born in Russian-occupied Poland, where women couldn't even dream of university, she was the impossible girl who refused to accept impossible. Even as a child, her brain worked like a precision instrument. While other kids played, young Maria was dissecting toys, measuring shadows, tracking insects like a forensic scientist. At 10 years old, she was already keeping detailed records that would make PhD students weep. She measured everything rainfall, sunlight, the way leaves fell. She wasn't just curious. She was systematically interrogating reality. When she finally escaped to Paris, professors noticed something unsettling. Other brilliant students would leap to conclusions. Maria would spend weeks measuring the same thing over and over, building data sets that were almost supernatural in their precision. They thought she was slow. They had no idea she was developing a new kind of genius zone that could force nature to confess its secrets through pure, methodical torture. In 1896, Henry Becquerel accidentally discovered uranium's mysterious death rays. Nobody knew what they were. Most scientists just talked about them. Marie Curie decided to hunt them down. She didn't theorize. She built weapons instruments so sensitive they could detect electrical whispers that would make your hair stand on end. Then she began the most systematic manhunt in scientific history. She tested every known element, every compound, measuring radiation like a detective, tracking a serial killer. But here's where her systematic mind became terrifying. She wasn't just collecting data. She was testing a hypothesis that would make other scientists call her insane. She believed radiation came from the atoms themselves. That atoms supposedly eternal, unchangeable building blocks of reality were actually dynamic, transforming. In 1898, this wasn't just revolutionary, it was scientific heresy. Her measurements revealed something that should have been impossible. Pitch blend ore was more radioactive than pure uranium. By every law of physics, this was wrong. Pure uranium should be the most radioactive uranium-containing substance on Earth. Other scientists would have dismissed it as measurement error. But Curie's systematic mind didn't accept impossible. She formed a hypothesis that would consume her life. Pitch blend contained unknown elements more radioactive than anything ever discovered. What followed was the most brutal scientific manhunt in history. She would process tons of pitch blend, stirring vats of radioactive ore with iron rods taller than herself. The process was systematic torture, heat, dissolve, precipitate, crystallize, purify, repeat hundreds of times. 
Every step required precision measurements. Every sample weighed, tested, recorded. Notebooks filled with data that tracked radioactivity levels like a heartbeat monitor. This wasn't just hard work. This was systematic, experimental thinking at its most obsessive and dangerous. Four years of systematic hell. Then breakthrough. Two new elements, polonium and radium. But that wasn't the real discovery. The real discovery was terrifying. Atoms weren't eternal. They were transforming, releasing energy, dying and being reborn. The numbers that changed everything? Pure radium. Two million times more radioactive than uranium. One gram of radium. Energy equivalent of 500 grams of burning coal. Source of energy. The atom itself? Curie had systematically proven that atoms were not immortal building blocks. They were dynamic systems capable of fundamental transformation. Her precise measurements revealed that radioactive decay followed mathematical laws. She could predict exactly when atoms would die. These weren't theories. These were experimental facts backed by thousands of measurements that cost her health, her strength, and eventually her life. Every nuclear power plant, every radiation treatment, every atomic clock, they all exist because one woman systematically tortured matter until it confessed its deepest secrets. The Nobel Committee had never seen anything like Curie's systematic experimental evidence. Her method was devastatingly simple. Step one, weaponize measurement. She created standard samples that made other scientists' instruments look like toys. Step two, test everything. Every element, every compound, every mineral. Systematic interrogation of the entire periodic table. Step three, document like a criminal investigation. Temperature, humidity, sample weight, radioactivity, time. Everything recorded with forensic precision. Step four, force patterns to emerge. She discovered radioactivity was proportional to uranium content. This meant radiation was atomic, not molecular. This single observation destroyed classical physics. Atoms were the source of radiation. They were transforming and releasing energy. But Curie didn't stop at observation. She systematically tested her hypothesis with dozens of uranium compounds. Every single one showed identical radioactivity per gram of uranium. Systematic experimental proof that atoms were not indivisible. The Nobel Committee was witnessing the birth of atomic physics. Isolating pure radium required processing a literal ton of radioactive ore to get one gram of the deadliest substance on Earth. The challenge wasn't just quantity, it was maintaining laboratory precision while handling industrial quantities of radioactive death. Curie's systematic approach to this impossible task, the death protocol. Every step documented with obsessive precision. Every chemical measured to exact concentrations. Every crystallization step timed like a bomb diffusal. Quality control from hell. She tested radioactivity at every stage. She could track exactly how much radium she was recovering and where the deadly material was going. Industrial precision. She processed 20 kilogram batches while maintaining measurement accuracy that would make modern labs jealous. Documentation of doom. Every day's work recorded in detail. Which techniques work best? How temperature affected the deadly processes? How to optimize each step toward the beautiful killer? After four years of systematic torture, she achieved the impossible. One gram of pure radium that glowed with its own ghostly light. Beautiful, deadly, an absolute proof that systematic thinking could force nature to surrender its most dangerous secrets. World War I Curie realized X-rays could save lives by finding bullets and shrapnel in wounded soldiers. But X-ray machines were massive, expensive, trapped in distant hospitals. Her solution was systematically brilliant and completely insane. She would drive X-ray technology to the battlefield herself. Curie designed mobile death ray units and personally drove them to the front lines. But this wasn't just engineering it, it was systematic optimization under fire. Her battlefield systematic approach 
tested x-ray designs under combat conditions, created training protocols for nurses operating deadly equipment, developed maintenance procedures for machines that could kill you, established quality control for images that meant life or death. Curie personally trained medical personnel while shells exploded around them. Her systematic implementation examined over one million wounded soldiers, but she was just getting started. She began systematic studies of how radiation affected living tissue. She developed precise methods for measuring deadly doses. This systematic research into radiation's medical applications launched radiation therapy and nuclear medicine. Today, millions of cancer patients benefit from treatments born in Marie Curie's systematic study of beautiful, deadly radioactivity. Two Nobel Prizes. Then Curie faced her ultimate challenge. How do you systematically build an empire of atomic knowledge? The Radium Institute. But she approached it like everything else with, systematic thinking that would outlast her own death. The systematic design. Not just a laboratory, an institution that would systematically advance radioactivity research for decades. The Global Network. She built international relationships, creating a worldwide network for sharing radioactive materials and deadly knowledge. The Knowledge Vault. Systematic documentation of every experiment. Standardized protocols that any researcher could follow. The Radium Institute became the world's nuclear research capital. It trained scientists who would split atoms, build nuclear weapons, and harness the power of the sun. Curie's systematic approach to building scientific institutions created a lasting impact that dwarfed any individual discovery. Marie Curie's greatest achievement wasn't discovering radium. It was proving that systematic experimental thinking could be more powerful than genius level intuition. Her systematic principles that changed everything. One, precision that kills measurements so accurate, they revealed phenomena other scientists missed entirely. Two, systematic hypothesis execution. Designing experiments that could definitively prove or disprove claims about reality. Three, data-driven truth. Let massive data sets reveal patterns instead of starting with pretty theories. Four, documentation that survives. Detailed records that allow verification and replication. Five, methodical problem annihilation. Systematic analysis and methodical solutions to seemingly impossible obstacles. These principles now control modern research. Every pharmaceutical trial, every space mission, every breakthrough, they all use systematic approaches. Curie pioneered, but her influence exploded beyond science. Quality control in manufacturing, data analysis in finance, medical diagnosis protocols, engineering, design, and testing. Curie proved that systematic, methodical thinking could be more powerful than brilliant intuition when tackling complex systems. Modern brain scanners would have lit up like Christmas trees studying Marie Curie's mind while she worked. What made her systematic thinking so devastatingly powerful? three supercharged brain systems working in perfect harmony. Her prefrontal cortex, the CEO of mental processing, was firing at superhuman levels, orchestrating 20-step systematic processes that would shatter normal minds. While other scientists struggled with simple procedures, Curie's enhanced mental architecture managed complex experimental protocols simultaneously. Her error detection system was operating at obsessive levels, catching measurement inconsistencies so tiny that other scientists dismissed them as insignificant. This hyperactive neural watchdog never slept, never accepted close enough, demanding perfection with nuclear level intensity. Most remarkably, her repetition centers had evolved into something almost superhuman. Normal people lose focus after dozens of repetitive tasks. Curie performed thousands of precise measurements without her attention wavering for even a moment. But here's the beautiful, terrifying truth. These cognitive superpowers aren't limited to genius level scientists. Every human brain contains the same neural structures. The difference is training. Curie accidentally discovered how to develop these abilities through years of methodical practice. 
turning systematic approaches into automatic mental habits. Her brain had become a precision instrument for forcing reality to reveal its secrets. And any sufficiently motivated person can develop the same neural superpowers through systematic practice. Marie Curie's systematic approach to radioactivity came with a price that makes your blood run cold. For decades, she handled radioactive materials with bare hands, carried test tubes of radium in her pockets, worked in laboratories filled with radioactive dust that was slowly killing her. Her systematic notebooks are still radioactive. They're locked in lead line boxes that will remain deadly for another 1,500 years. The systematic precision that made her discoveries possible also led to systematic poisoning. In 1934, radiation finally claimed its victim. But here's what makes her story terrifying and beautiful. Even as radiation sickness consumed her, she continued systematic research. She documented her own death with the same precision she applied to atomic structure. Her final notebooks contain systematic observations about radiation's effects on human tissue. Dying, she was still contributing to scientific knowledge. Tragically, her systematic documentation of her own destruction provided crucial data for future radiation safety protocols. The safety measures protecting nuclear scientists today are written in Marie Curie's blood. Curie's greatest legacy, proving systematic thinking beats individual brilliance when tackling impossible problems. She showed that methodical precision reveals truths, intuition, misses. Systematic documentation builds permanent knowledge. Patient, repetitive work leads to revolutionary discoveries. In our age of complex global challenges, we need more systematic thinkers like Marie Curie people who can design methodical approaches to impossible problems and execute them with precision and deadly persistence. Marie Curie died in 1934, killed by the radioactive materials she discovered. She proved you don't need brilliant flashes of insight to change the world. You need systematic thinking, precise measurement, and the courage to pursue methodical work even when it might kill you.